Are we ready for another great day of computer organization? So at the end of class last time, what we had done is we looked at some micro code. So let's review a little bit what we did. Um, see, do you have an assignment due today? I think the assignment was related to this. Um, so we reviewed what the von Neumann cycle is and what are the steps of the von Neumann cycle? Fetch, decode, increment, execute, repeat, right? And so now we're seeing that at the microcode level we actually have to do that fetching and incrementing and executing. And um, so in order to fetch the instruction from memory we have to put the address in the MAR, which stands for MAR, Memory Address Register. And then it has to be, we have to assert the memory control for three consecutive cycles. And at the end of the third cycle, the memory subsystem will have the data for us on the data lines. And at the end of the third cycle, we clock the data from the bus into the MDR. And MDR stands for? memory data register. So here again is a picture of figure 12.2 and what we did last time is shown here in figure 12.5 these are the control signals to do that. So if you look at figure or cycle one, notice that each one of these cycles is numbered and I don't know if you noticed but Oh, have you guys downloaded PEP9 and have you started using it? Pretty slick, huh? The numbers come up automatically and when you save it, by the way, if you save it as a text file, the numbers are inserted in the text file, but then if you open that, if you open that, the numbers are actually stripped off of it and they become automatic again in the app. So don't, you, you should never have to write the number of the cycle, but if you save your file, when you save your file and hand it in, um, they will be numbered like this. And why are the numbers important? Because each one of those numbers is a what? Is a cycle. And the cycle takes a certain fixed amount of time to execute depending on the cycle time of, uh, on how fast your CPU is. So you literally, when you count that, you're counting cycles, so you're counting numbers of nanoseconds that it takes to execute. Do you, does everybody see? And you know, when we, when, when we program at a high level of abstraction, it's not always, we, 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 do you remember we used to do statement execution counts? And we would count statements, but those are HOL6 statements. Those HOL6 statements, they get translated to what? A bunch of what? Each HOL6 statement gets translated to a bunch of what? ISA3. Yeah, ISA3 statements, or assembly five, or ISA3, which is the same, Whichever one to one. Yeah, exactly. But now what we are seeing is that each one of those instructions, each one of those ISA3 instructions might take more than what? More than one what? Cycle. cycle. But now that we're at the cycle, we are literally, now, now that we are counting cycles, we are literally counting exactly, precisely how long in nanoseconds it takes to execute this sequence because each one is a, is a cycle. Is everybody with me on that? And now look, so figure 12.5 shows these are numbered, and how many cycles do we have to do the fetch and the increment? How many cycles altogether? Seven, right? So if each, if the cycle time is like 10 nanoseconds, that would be like 70 nanoseconds to do that. All right, is everybody clear on what that means? And so, in cycle one, we said A equals six, B equals seven, MAR clock. So that puts the instruction register into the memory address register. Then we assert memory for three times in a row. And at the end of the third one, we clock the data register, the information that's on the data bus into the MDR, the memory data register. And then cycle five takes sends what to where? Cycle 5 sends what to where? <coughs> C. 
Cycle five. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Is this mic on? <laughs> Cycle five. Since what? The <laughs> yeah. Since what to the instruction register? Yes. Which is where? Well, not in cycle five. In cycles one, two, three, and four, that's when it came from memory into the CPU, but from specifically where in the CPU on cycle five? MDR. Yes, from the MDR, from the memory data register. Let's go back here and look. So, so see, it, that's, it went from the memory data register through the AMUX, through the ALU, through the CMUX, boom, and back up into the IR. Does everybody see that? That was just plumbing. And then in six and seven, we did PC gets PC plus one. But then we said... You can make it more efficient. You can make it more efficient. Why is that? How could we do that? How did we do that? Yes, during cycles two and three, the AOU is not being used, nor is the A bus or the B bus or the C bus. So now we have hardware parallelism. Does everybody see what we're doing? This is parallel. You see, we, we, we're using the components of the CPU in parallel. To make the most out of it. To make the most, yeah. To, and there's no, tra I mean, this is not, we're not having to add hardware components to do this. With the hardware that we already have, we can parallel, we can run things in parallel, hardware parallelism. And so, um, and so uh, figure 12.6 shows the um, timing diagram of the load clock, the MAR clock, the MDR clock, and the memory signal. And then, we, and then the next slide shows that we could combine those cycles. And then on fi in figure 12.7, here they are combined and now it only takes five. So if each, if each um, clock cycle is 10 nanoseconds, now it only takes 50 nanoseconds instead of 70. That's huge. How much, what did we save? Two out of seven, right? So our savings would be, somebody have a calculator? What's two divided by seven? Point two eight five. So you're talking twenty eight percent. That's a big savings because every time, every time it does, every time you do fetch and increment. So you might think, well, what's you might think, what's um, what is um, you know. 70 nanoseconds compared to 50 nanoseconds compared to 70 nanoseconds is so fast that you no one would ever notice it. But this is spinning billions of times per second, and each time it has to do that. So yeah, that, that it, because this is on every cycle you're saving this. So you are that, that's a huge savings. You see how to calculate the savings here? We're going to do that later on. You'll, you'll have to know how to calculate the. Take the amount that you got rid of out of the total you originally. Yes, and that's the percent savings. That's the percent time savings, right? And all this whole concept of uh, parallelism and hardware parallelism and stuff, we're gonna we'll see. And when we do optimizations, we're gonna we're gonna see some alternative. This is just our first go around. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how to save time, save more time later. All right, now so what? What we're going to do for the remainder of this hour then is uh, we're going to do a few more microcode. We're going to we're going to implement some instructions. Okay. Now, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you remember this or not, but do you remember the addressing modes? They were like S or I was immediate. D. D is direct. In, do you remember what indirect? Remember the letter? For, this doesn't have the letters on it. This is figure 12.8. But do you remember the letter for indirect? No, X was indexed. N was indirect. It couldn't use I for indirect because I is immediate. So N was indirect. Um, stack relative, that was S. And then stack relative deferred, SF. 
indexed, we said is X, stack indexed, SX. SX. Now this one, I actually, we actually changed this one in PEP9. I don't know if you remember, you probably don't remember this. But in PEP8, stack def it was called stack indexed deferred. Now it's stack, yeah, I changed it in PEP. Uh, well, because I, a, 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 a user had, some real, had a nice insight on this. As soon as he told me, he said, you know, it should be the other. And as soon as he said it and, and why, I immediately said, you're right. And so we changed it in PEP9. But in PEP8, it is, it is um, stack indexed. Stack indexed deferred. And it's S, X, F, but in PEP9, it's stack deferred index, and it's S, F, X. But it's the same definition. I mean, it does the same thing. And this is just terminology, is all. But the assembler in but the assembler in PEP9, you have to write do stack deferred index this way. Yeah, you have to write it this way. It's everybody. So that's one different one slight difference in terminology. And now the question is why? So look. You see the what does deferred mean? Look at the diff, what's the difference between immediate and direct in the definition? What's the difference between immediate and direct? Immediate is the operand is the operand specifier. What's direct? Yeah, the operand is at memory. The operand specifier is the address in memory of the operand. So that is one level of deferred. And then what is indirect? It's the address of the, yeah, the operand is the address of the address of memory. So that's another level of deferred. And what's the difference between stack relative and stack relative deferred? It's another of deferred. But now look at stack deferred, what we call stack deferred index. Do you see that what you do is it's deferred first and then it's indexed? Do you see? It's not, the, 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 the bracket is not, it's, it's here, it's not over here. This bracket is, do you see, do you see what, anyhow, yeah, it's a small detail, we shouldn't dwell on it. All right. Oh, by the way, so I think your homework assignment, was that for today? Is to do, let's go back and talk about that just for a second. It's to do, in figure 12.7, what we did was, we fetched the instruction specifier and incremented the program counter by one. And I think you, in your homework assignment, you had to do what? Fetch the operand. You had to assume that the CPU figured out that it was a non-unary instruction, and you had to fetch, yeah, but th this is very straightforward. Let's go back to our figure 12.4. Do you see what you're doing? You're doing what's inside the if in figure 12.4. Right? And let me repeat the, the way to do this. In the app, go to the help system. I forget the problem number. 12 point, is it 30 something? 12, so go to the app, go to 12.28. Oh, why don't we just do it? Okay, okay, so here's our demo. Um, so when you do, when you write this, uh, this is gonna be your first, um, you're gonna get some room over here. This is gonna be the first microcode that you hand in. So what you do is you go to the help system here, and we go down to problem 12, it was 28, is that what you said? So you go to problem 12, 20, and look here. File, blah, 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 problem. Blah. And here's unit pre and unit post. Copy to microcode. And there it is. 
And now, obviously, what do you need to do before you actually write your code? What do you always do on all of your programs? Your Put your name, address, date. If you don't, you know, you'll get docked. So boom, boom, name, boom, boom, date, boom, boom, assignment. So make sure you do that. And now what it has is it has these unit pre's and unit posts. And then you'll start writing here. So you're going to start writing uh, blah, 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 blah. And notice that it numbered it automatically. So you don't have to put the line number in there. Okay? Or you can do what? Remember how you can do? Or you can put like something here, like two, and we can put make this be this and put something here, three, whatever. And then when we and if we do copy to code microcode, boom, it puts the did you see how it did that? It it'll put the code right for you right there in the code. So that's a nice little time saving feature. So anyway, that's how to set up your homework assignment for tomorrow or tonight. Actually, so the question is, is there a way to go the other way around? And the answer is yes. What you do is you start debugging. Of course, if I start debugging now, there's going to be those errors. Um, oh, here, maybe we can, yeah, let me demo that. Oh, here, we can do, um, look at this. We can also do remove error messages. See how slick that was? All right, and so what happens is if you, now let's clear the, let's um, go to the system and clear the CPU. All right, and so now what happens is, so the question was, is there a way to go the other way around to see what, to see how this works? And the answer is yes. What you do is when you do start debugging, you see now it's starting to this, and it will actually, in the debug mode, it will actually put it in here as if you, as if you, entered the, in, the control signals right there. So yeah, it goes both ways. Any questions about how to do the homework? It's pretty straightforward, I think. All right, let's quit this demo now. Okay, so that was our demo for, on how to hand, uh, do the homework assignment using PEP9 CPU. So now let's um, see if we can work through a few more a couple more instructions. Um, so we had just reviewed the addressing modes and the next instruction that we're going to do that, that we're going to implement is store byte. Now here again there's a difference between in the mnemonics between PEP8 and PEP9. In PEP8 it's um, S-T-B-Y-T-E-A. I think it's store byte accumulator like this. Do you remember that? It's really awkward. So they're all regularized in PEP9. We changed the mnemonics of some of the instructions in the instruction set. And so now it's, it's S-T-B-A. And what's nice about in here, do you know what it was, what, what the sto how to store a word? It was S, what was, do you remember how to store accumulator? What was the mnemonic for store accumulator? STA. It was S-T, but now it's S-T-W-A. So see, you either store byte accumulator or you store word accumulator. So it's all very regular. So we changed the, those of you, who, oh yeah, so, some of you are in the computer systems now. <laughs> you're gonna have, you're gonna do this one in that class. You're gonna do this one in this class. <laughs> but uh, we're not gonna do lots of you know. Actually, we'll, this won't affect us at all because we're writing microcode. See what I mean? We're not writing the we're not writing the uh, mnemonics, the ISA the, the ASMB five mnemonics. We're not writing those anyway. But you'll see in the documentation section the mnemonics are a little different. So, do you remember how store byte accumulator works? Actually, maybe we should review that. Yeah. 
you do? How, how does how did the how did the let me see store is is store from CPU to memory or memory to CPU? Which one was store? CPU to memory. Right. Correct. Because it's not loading, so it's storing. Yeah, storing. store is so store is CPU to mem. Aha, so notice that this is the opposite of what we did with the fetch. So we're going to go the other direction this time. And then, but what about the store byte? Because here, if we had, if before, suppose before the accumulator is, um, is like, um, let's just say one, two, three, four, and let's say mem sub, 0x, zero, 0, 0, 5, 5 is um, AB. So if this is before, then what is after? You remember? So if, if this is before, um, store byte. I should say store byte here. Uh, okay, sorry to interrupt. What did you say? Yes, it'll take this three, it'll take the lower order one. So it'll take this three, four, and it'll put it here. Right? So after, and so what is the accumulator afterwards? It's still one, two, three, four. And then, and then mem zero x zero zero five five would be 3, 4. Hex, right? Does everybody remember that's, that's what the store byte does? And, you know, if you don't remember exactly how these things work, uh, that's not going to be on the test. I mean, you know, I'll, we'll always specify what it does, you know. So does everybody see? But now, look. Now what do we have? Now we have this figure 12.2. Now here's what we're going to do with these instructions. We are going to assume that we've already done the fetch and the decode and the increment. Are you with me? We're always going to assume that that's the case. And that's all we're going to be doing now when we do these other exercises is we're going to do the what part? The execute. Are you with me? But you understand that each time an instruction executes, it does fetch, decode, increment, and then execute, and then repeat. Are we good? Is everybody good? So at this point in figure 12.2, the question is, how, how do we set up the plumbing? You know, how do we exercise the plumbing? to do from here to get from this state to this state. What's the definition of state? Set of variables Yeah, so a list of variables and their associated values. That's what, they, that's what it is at the software level, but at the hardware level, what is it? It's the set of registers and memory and their values. Yeah. See? That's just the hardware equivalent. Have we talked about hardware equivalent, hardware software equivalents? Anything you can do in software, you can do in hardware. Anything you can do in hardware, you can do in software. Yeah. All right. Well, who wants to start? We're, we'll go around the class. So we assume we've done the fetch, decode, increment, and now we're doing the execute. Now, how in the heck are we going to get? Are we going to get from here, from this state to this state? So. Here's cycle one. Boom. How are we going to microcode this? What do you think? Okay, so, so what you're saying here is A equals one. Now, why did you say A equals one? Because what, if we look up here, one is what? The low order byte of the what? Accumulator in the register bank. Good deal. Who wants it? Okay, so next we'll go around. This is a circular register. Remember, like we did in the lab? Oh, yeah. 
yeah. the little red dot. <laughs> yeah, or linked list, or a circular linked list. Oh, the so did we, didn't we just say that hardware and software were logically equivalent? <laughs> Geek humor. <laughs> Okay, so so a so so now it's it's on the a bus. So now what? So the a bus would be. Where do we want this? Yeah. Well, when we say a equals one, you understand the low order byte of a is going to be on the a bus. Mm -hmm. Where do we want it to, where does the A, where can it go from the register bank on the A bus? And where do we want it to go? We want it to go back Well, we to to well, hold, 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 yeah, let's, let's, let's come over here. Where, where eventually do we want this 3, 4 to go? Into memory at, we, yeah. at, at, at some, at, at, at what address? Uh, zero, zero, five, five. Oh. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what we ha we haven't specified the problem yet because we don't know what the addressing mode is. Okay, the addressing mode is direct. This is going to be store by the accumulator. They're direct. Yeah. Well, sorry, we didn't specify that. So now, what by let's before we. Go on. Because we're using direct addressing, what do we know? What does direct addressing mean? Let's go back to that table. Remember what direct, what is direct? The op, let's go back. In direct addressing, what do we know? You're going to the spot in memory of the operand specifier. Yes, the operand specifier is the address in memory of where it's gonna go. But now, yeah, question? It it is. It is the question is is it possible to store byte immediate and that's. Oh wait, sorry, no. <laughs> you can load byte immediate. You can't store byte immediate. Yeah. Oh, ooh, that was a good question and I answered it wrong at first. The answer is no. That's illegal. Because store is to memory. So yeah, so that was that was a very good question actually. Okay, but now where are we going to get? Well, we've got the date. We've got the data on the address line, but but where is it going to go? I mean, eventually it has to it has to go where? It's got to go to to memory. So how do we get something from? Here, how do how we get something into memory? Can you see where it has to go to? Yeah, so it has to go down through the AMUX. Through the AMUX. Through the a ALU. Through the ALU. Uh, up through the CMUX. Through the CMUX. And then. Um, oh. Oh no no no. Oh yeah. Through oh. The C, uh, through the CMUX. Yes. Through the MDR. MDR MUX. Through the MDR and then to. In, yeah, into the MDR. And then three cycles, mm -hmm. and then to memory. Now, we're going to go down a path. We started, we started here. We'll, we'll go ahead and take this path. Oh, well, let's go ahead and continue. You'll, we'll, we, we, we might, well, there might be. Let's, let's see. So then, would it be uh, A mux equals um, zero? A mux equals zero, and why zero? Because uh, it's on the, from the right. Okay. Remember how it worked? It was zero is from the left, one was from the right. Oh, so then it would be it would be one. It would be one. Everybody clear on this? And then what next? Zero. I think zero is the one that sends it straight through. And then what? And then now that it goes through the ALU, what does it have to go through there next? CMUX. CMUX. So do you remember how the CMUX, how the MUXs work? Yeah, you just said it's a one. 
that yeah. it passes through. Yes. So, yes. So C mux equals one. And then what? MDR mux equals one, and then? Uh, I think, uh, do we also have to set mem right? Ah, good point. We have to get it into the MDR first. So we gotta set, so we gotta clock the MDR CK. Yes, and so now it's not comma, it's semicolon. MDR CK. Everybody clear? Right. Yeah? Now what? How does memory, do you remember how? how figure out the there first. Yeah. How, how, does this whole, how, does the, how does the interface between memory and the CPU work? You know, when we did the fetch, we, we had to, when we did the fetch, what did we have to do for three cycles in a row? Mem read. This time we're going to have to do what? Mem write. But how are we? How is the system going to know what address in memory to write to? We have to get stuff into the MAR. Yes, we have to get something into the MAR. Oh, good. This is good. But from where? Where is there? Good question. Where is there? <laughs> Where is, yeah, where is there? Where, yeah. It's in 9 and 10? Oh, that is everybody clear on that? What is, here in figure 12.2, where, where, what is 9 and 10? That's the instruction register. That's where the what is located? What's it called? It has a word. It has a name. Here. Yeah, 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 you're close. Here. With the table, figure 12.8. Yes. The, yeah, let's note that. Oh, we're, we're running out of room here. The operand specifier is in registers 9 and 10. Why? Because th that's what happened when we fetched. In fact, you're going to write the fetch part to get them into the... Is everybody clear on that? We should we write that down? Here, let's write that down. The operand, we'll use the same. Specifier is in the IR at, what did you say the addresses were? At, at 9 and 10. At register address 9. At register addresses 9 and 10. And they got there by doing, during the fetch part. Yeah, now that's an important point. Is everybody forgetting all this? Okay. So therefore, Let's go back to here. So therefore, what has to what has to happen here? A equals nine. Next. Okay. So uh, A equals nine, and then. Um... So A equals nine. That's going to take the most significant byte of the IR and put it where? Well, not yet. Or on the A bus. Mm -hmm. Then what do we have to oh, do? So then just uh, A mux equals one? No. You want to pass? Sure. Next. Those of you out here watching this in, uh, in the future, what do you think? <laughs> Unfortunately, they can't tell us. Can you fill us in? You want to pass also? Pass? You, what about? Passing is fine. I think I will. Oh, we're, we're all going to pass. Is it um, M-A-R-C-K? Not yet. Uh, 
B equals 10. Now what's that going to do? Now look, look at figure 12.2. A equals 9 is going to put the high order byte of the operand specifier on the A bus and B equals 10 is going to put what? The low order byte on the what? On the B bus. On the B bus. Now where do we want to put those in? Now, now what are, where do we want to send them? Where do, where do we want to send them? To the what? Where does the ad, where, what has to contain the address? The MAR. So now what do we do? Yeah, but see the MAR clock does both of them. Do you see how that one MAR signal clocks both in at the same time? So this would be semicolon what? MAR clock. Now does everybody see how that worked? So that's going to put that in, are, are you with me? And now what do we have to do? Three cycles in a row. Because now we have the data in the where? In the MDR. In the MDR, we have the address where? In the MAR. In the MAR, and, what, and our system requires what? Three consecutive what? Me this time it's going to be, we're sending to memory. So it's memwrite. Are you with me? So, so, so three is going to be what? Mem right. Four is going to be what? Mem right. Five is going to be what? Mem right. And the, we don't clock. The mem right will clock. We don't clock memory from the CPU. We don't clock it into the cell in memory from the CPU. How many cycles? I think we can do it in four. Let's see. Because what did we do here first? Remember when we started here we said, ah, it might be better if we did what? If we do this right, because if we do, there's a, there's a bus protocol that we didn't know about. But if we do this one first, we can get it done in four cycles. So look at what we did. Uh, we did A equals 9, B equals 10, MAR clock, so we did this one first. We do, if we do this one first and then this one second, then it will work. Now why will it work? It's because of these bus protocols. So I've, I have summarized for you these two bus protocols, the memory read protocol and the memory write. Actually, we were doing a memory write. Let's look at the memory write protocol. So here's, these are the, this is the contract between the CPU and main memory. By the way, every bus in a computer system has a bus protocol. And those are the rules. You know what these are like? These are the hardware versions of preconditions and postconditions. You see what I'm saying? It's the precondition that has to be satisfied in order for the transaction to take place in the hardware. Are you with me? So this is, and, so, and these are called protocols bus protocols. So the memory write protocol is the, the address has to be in the MAR before the first mem write cycle. The data can be in the MDR on or before the second mem write cycle. We didn't know that at the time. But we can take advantage of that. If we take advantage of that we can decrease this from five to four cycles. And we can put the next data in the MDR the next data in the MDR on the third mem write cycle, but you cannot change the MAR on the third mem write cycle. So if you follow these, if we follow these rules, we can decrease this by one cycle. Is everybody clear? And here, why don't we just go ahead and do one, finish up with the demo. What was this? And I think we will be, we'll be able to see it. Now watch this. Okay, so here's our demo. It's going to be, uh, it was figure 12.9. And look, check out the precondition and the postcondition. This is the code that we looked at on the slide. And here, let's go ahead and copy this to microcode. And look, um, see, it says, what is in the IR? F1 is the 
num is the um, instruction specifier, and it's going to be 000 f is where it's going to go. And so if in the beginning the accumulator has a b here, do you see that afterwards in the unit post condition at 000 f it should be a b? Does everybody see how the precondition and post condition work there? Now watch this. This is so cool. We will start, boom, and look, you guys. Here, we can single step through. It put, what did it do? It put A equals 9, B equals 10. Are you with me? A equals 9, B equals 10. Well, here, 9 and 10. That's what? 0, 0, 0, F. So when we click, what should happen here? 0, 0, 0, F. Are you with me? Single step. Boom. Is that slick? And now what? A equals 1, A mux equals 1, so the data is coming from where? From the uh, lower order bits? Yeah, this AB from the accumulator, and what's it going to go, what's it going to do? It's going to go through here, through here, through here, through here, through here, and boom. So when we do it again, this should be AB, right? So let's do that. Boom, AB, and now now let's scroll to memory. Uh, what was our memory? Um, 0, 0, 0, F. Let's go to 0, 0, 1, 0. So, oops. 0, 0, 0, oh, let's go to 0, 0, 0, F. Okay, so this is 0, 0, 0, F, right? Up here. So we'll do one more memwrite. And now you see it's ready to go over the, the data over into here. And one more, and what should happen? A -B. Boom, there's the AB. Huh? See you next time.